Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Cientia. It's good to see you this afternoon. As the semester winds down, it's good to see that there are still some strong and hearty souls who can make it out for uh, a lecture. Uh, I'm Jim Pomerantz, professor of psychology at Rice and director of Cientia. And this is our fourth lecture of the academic year on a series that we hope you're finding rewarding and memorable, um, if a bit unsettling, a series uh, whose theme is conflict, violence, and war. Uh, before I get on with the proceedings, though, a couple of, uh, of plugs that I'd like to make, actually three. The third, our speaker, Rick Stoll, will make for uh, Houston, for Revels Houston. If you don't know what that is, Rick will explain it uh, as soon as he comes up to the podium, I'd guess. Uh, a second is that a, um, uh, the Institute of Interfaith Dialogue is making available to all of us uh, free books which uh, follow up on the fascinating lecture that we heard last month from Davis from David Cook of Religious Studies. Um, this is a book on terror that includes uh, articles by a number of leading uh, Muslim scholars. We're not endorsing it. I haven't seen the book until 10 minutes ago, but uh, copies are here for all of us to uh, take away and read. Uh, and then lastly, I'm happy to announce that the details of the 5th DeLang Conference, um, which is uh, sponsored by Damaris and Hank Hudspeth sitting over here, um, uh, have now been finalized, and we have some flyers here and a website that's out. Uh, the fifth DeLang conference is going to be on frontiers in medicine, society, pharmacology, and membrane biology in the uh, genomic era, and that's going to be March 7th through 9th uh, here on campus. So uh, those of you who are familiar with the DeLang conferences know how wonderful they are, and if you're at all interested in uh, the frontiers of medicine, I'd urge that you attend that. So those are the plugs. Um, let me, uh, before I uh, turn to introduce our speaker today, Rick Stoll, who's so well known to almost everyone on this campus uh, that he probably needs no introduction, let me just remind everybody of why, other than Rick, we're here today. Our, our theme with this year's Scientia is, as I mentioned, conflict, violence, and war. And as always, the theme is developed by a faculty committee, and this year that committee was headed up uh, by David Queller of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. You can read all you want to know about it from our website or from the other materials that Ellen Butler has made available down here uh, 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 on the table in the front. And I think we've got our technology down to the point where you can watch many, perhaps even all, of the lectures we've had in our series this year on, uh, on the web. There have been webcast, and so uh, if you've uh, not been able to see any of the ones uh, that we've had so far this year, that's a chance for you to catch up. Um, I won't talk again about the program uh, blurb because I think most of you probably know what our theme is about. Uh, let me uh, just say that we've had uh, uh, three wonderful talks so far this year. Joan Strassman got us off to a great start talking about conflict and violence in animals. Uh, and Marty Wiener, history, talked to us appropriately enough about the history of violence. And then, as I mentioned just last month, uh, David uh, Cook talked about uh, violence and jihad. Um, going into the spring semester, assuming we make it through the New Year's uh, alive, we have a full set of programs uh, lined up for the spring, uh, starting on January 19th, where we'll hear from Kirsten Oster in English on images in violence. Uh, and then Rick Wilson from Political Science, who's uh, with, with us as well, uh, will speak on um, February 15th. And Dave Schneider from Psychology, whether Dave is here, uh, will talk uh, on April 19th. And then we're trying to finalize our Bachner lecture, so watch this space. Uh, we certainly should know by January who our uh, Bachner lecture is going to be. Uh, Rick will speak for the traditional 50 minutes, and then we'll follow it with uh, questions and answers, and then a reception with uh, with cheese and wine if you can find it. Uh, <laughs> there's a story behind that I can tell any of you in, in private should you <laughs> be interested. Uh, so uh, the reason why we're here today is to, to hear Rick Stoll. Uh, like I say, he's well known to most of us, maybe all of us in the room, but by way of background, Rick got his uh, undergraduate degree from University of Rochester with distinction in 1974 and followed that up with his PhD five years later from University of Michigan, uh, and then came right on down to Rice where he's climbed his way uh, up the ranks and uh, made his presence felt across the entire campus uh, since that time. 
Uh, he became full professor in 1990, but prior to that he served as, um, as department chair. And uh, in case you're wondering whether it's possible to be a department chair without being a full professor, Rick established <laughs> that you can in fact do that and do that well. From 94 to 2001, he was the associate director for academic programs at the Baker Institute for Public Policy. Currently, Rick is serving as associate dean for the School of Social Sciences uh, and also as chair of the steering committee for the exciting new master's degree program coming out of my favorite school, the Rice <laughs> School of Continuing Studies. Uh, Rick's interests lie in the areas of international relations, international conflict, uh, U.S. foreign policy, and national, uh, US national security policy. And in those areas, Rick is very active nationally. He's been a reviewer for dozens of journals and publication series in his field. He's the author of five books, including one that just uh, came out this year entitled Multiple Paths to Knowledge in International Relations, Methodology in the Study of Conflict Management and Conflict Resolution. And then a very well-known book of his uh, from 1990 on exploring real politic, probing international relations theory with computer simulation. And if we're lucky, we may get to see a little glimpse of those simulations. For those of you who haven't uh, had experience with those in the past, that's uh, quite an eye-opener. Uh, Rick's the author of about 40 uh, articles and chapters published in such highly regarded outlets as the Journal of Conflict Management, Conflict Management and Peace Science, and the Journal of Peace Research, and these writings make it clear how appropriate he is as a speaker in our series. He's been the PI or co-PI on NSF grants. Here on campus, um, he's a highly visible member of the community. He's been in a faculty associate at Jones College from 1980 until the present and, and has been a graduation marshal, we've all seen him, uh, from 1984 to the present. He's won so many teaching awards, it's embarrassing, uh, particularly for people like me who have never won one, he's won the, <laughs> won the uh, Nicholas Salgo uh, Distinguished Teacher Award, uh, the Graham Stebbings, Stebbings Memorial Service Award, uh, the George R. Brown Award for Superior Teaching in 1985, 87, 88, 95, and 2000. The George R. Brown Award for Excellence in Teaching, Excellence in Teaching, uh, the big one in 1990. He won the Jones College Distinguished Associate Award 12 times since he came here, and the only times where he didn't win it was when he won the top one, which is the Outstanding Associate Award. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, that gives you at least some feel for the impact he's had on the campus. Finally, it was my, my privilege and pleasure to work with Rick uh, over several years laying out the blueprint for what evolved into the Baker Institute uh, for Public Policy. For a good stretch of time, it was basically Rick and me with the extent <laughs> of, the, of the planning group. Um, and I think as many of you know, it was Rick Stoll who first proposed the idea for a Baker Institute, which now of course has become such a major force on our campus. So as always, let me ask you to turn off your pagers, your cell phones, anything else that beeps, and tune in to Rick Stoll, whose title is, Are Leo DeRocher and Paul Wolfowitz Rice Right? Do Nice States Finish Last? Rick Stoll. Thank you. I, I won't. Thank you very much. OK, and here's the shameless plug. Uh, uh, Maximizing my musical ability, I am an assistant stage manager for Revels Houston. And the only reason I bring that up, well, actually, I bring it up because I'm trying to get you to go to the show, is uh, this is what we refer to as Hell Week. We are in Moore's uh, Opera House from 6 p.m. to midnight the whole week, running the sh you know, getting the show ready. So I have to get over there by 6. So what I'm hoping is if I drag out the presentation, and then the first few questions are real easy, I can get out of here before I have to handle any difficult questions. But if you're interested in seeing people sing Scottish music, Scottish Scottish dances, some skits, uh, please go to the show. It's both this coming weekend and next weekend at Moore's Opera House, and there have been a number of outstanding individuals who participated in it. For example, one of the sons of an associate dean of engineering was in the show one year, and believe it or not, two years, you're right, sorry, making a special guest starring appearance many years ago, our dean of engineering. <laughs> you, he can explain it to you. Okay. <clears throat> For those of you who are not aficionados of baseball, Leo DeRocher was a baseball player, but probably known better as a baseball manager for a number of years. And he, he has this quote of, nice guys finish last. And just to expand on his philosophy of winning in baseball, I th uh, here's a brief quote. If I were playing third base and my mother were rounding third with the run that was going to beat us, I'd trip her. <laughs> oh, I'd pick her up and brush her off and say, sorry, mom, but nobody beats me. Okay. 
Uh, Paul Wolfowitz, as probably most of you know, is the number two man in the Department of Defense and is also widely regarded as sort of the, oh, I don't know, the intellectual force behind the Bush administration's philosophy on foreign policy. And uh, I, I didn't want to spend four years looking for the perfect quote on Google, but uh, for example, he once said, but if you're talking about trying to move people to something they're not inclined to do, then you've got to have leverage. And one piece of leverage is the ultimate threat of force. Now, within international relations, probably the dominant framework in the sense that it's the one that's been used the longest probably and by the most people is something called realism.